Did I just go? Okay. Hi, I'm Ella Geller here with TV Studios Local Legend Spotlight with Coach Steve Tatmeyer. Coach, how are you doing today? Doing great, Ella. It's good to be here. Awesome. Coach, um, we just have a couple of questions for you today. So you're obviously really well known in this community for your coaching career and um, all the young athletes you've impacted, but we would love to know a little bit about your high school and college basketball career when you were playing. Can you tell us a little about that? Yeah, I really, uh, you know, Owensville always holds a dear spot for me because I was here when we won a state championship in 1974 and played on a real good team. My senior year was 28-3 and uh, had just a great experience. The community was so involved and, and uh, it was a great community to, uh, to have that. And then I left and uh, when I went to college, I went to Missouri State for a year and uh, played basketball there and uh, ended up transferring out to uh, junior college at East Central. Back then had a basketball team and played on a real nice team there. Went 28-3 or 28-5, I guess, with that team and then went to Southeast Missouri State and finished out my playing career at Southeast. We actually, um, I found a picture of oh, your no. high school team. <laughs> so I actually, we did we couldn't place a year on it, but you're in this picture. And I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about some of the guys that you played with on this team. Oh, yeah, this is a special. I got this hanging in my uh, in my uh, uh, game room at home, and uh, actually we had a 40th year anniversary for the state championship oh, really? team. And uh, everybody was there. Uh, uh, Jim Bodecker on this picture uh, died in a farming accident. Uh, when he was about 30 years old. So his dad, Jim, uh, stood in his spot. But we got a picture with everybody in the same spots. Our That's coach so made cool. it back. And, uh, and I've got that hanging on my wall. It's a, it's a real uh, special picture to me. But, yeah, great team. Just uh, we, we like this picture. Right now we're not uh, uh, in uniform. This was actually after a practice. Really? But it was, it was one of the deals where all the state championship teams uh, seem to have the junior varsity, everybody together. And this uh, – this score of 10 players, we had 10 players in the team that all, uh, you know, eight of us played a lot of minutes, but we had two other uh, players that were really good teammates that played quite a bit, and they were good players. They just, on the, most teams, they'd have been starting, but this was a real special team and a run. So these were the guys that were really in practice every day, and it really was a, it's a, a picture that brings back really good memories. Uh, That's really neat. Some of the local people, uh, you know, again, I mentioned uh, Jim Decker, and he's still got sisters and brothers, you know, Hootie's here in town, and his dad's still here, and uh, Tom Blimke, of course, was an all-state player on that team, was really a, a good player, Mike Garlock, Randy Kosar, uh, there was four of us, uh, Mike Garlock, Tom Blimke, and uh, Craig Brox and myself were all from Gerald, so uh, back then you went through eight grades of school at Gerald, so when we went to Owensville High School as freshmen, we felt like we were going to college, you know, it was a big, you had a locker, and you went to different classes and all this, so it was really a uh, Mixing uh, our experience there with the high school guys that we met and got to play with, it was really special and really had a lot to do with me going into coaching and a lot of things I learned there I still use today. That's a really cool history behind that picture. Um, so you've obviously had a very successful coaching career at various places, but one that our community has a close connection to was when you came and you coached um, the 2016 girls team to third place at the Final Four. Could you tell us a little bit about that team and your experience with them? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a, a different experience for me because I'd coached college men my whole life. And uh, when I said I was going to coach the girls, it was, uh, you know, a lot of my former players called up and goes, you can't do that, coach. You can't do it. <laughs> but uh, but it, it was a lot of fun. We had uh, girls that really worked hard that, uh, that once the season started committed, you know, and, uh, and uh, we just kept getting a little bit better all year, which is what you look for in a – a team is a team that keeps improving, and I always tell people we finished fourth in the Sullivan tournament and third in the state. So, uh, <laughs> so we just kept uh, getting better and uh, had some special players. Of course, Haley Disselkamp was on that team. It's not only a special high school player, but then I went on to an unbelievable college career. But, uh, but I had a lot of fun with it. It was it was a good time, and uh, and uh, see some of those girls around yet today. It was it was a, a fun year, and uh, I think a year that they'll remember for a long time. Bringing up uh, Haley Discamp and speaking of talented players, you've obviously coached a lot of players who have gone on to be very successful, but can you think of a player off the top of your head who just like really made an impact on you in your time coaching? Well, yeah, you know, it, it's hard to narrow it down. I was at Northwest Missouri State for 21 years as a head coach and had some All-Americans play for me there and, and a lot of names that you wouldn't be familiar <laughs> with because at that, at that level, you, you usually don't go on to the NBAs, but uh, but had just special players. But a lot of times I think people you look at and you think uh, 
who was your All Americans? Those are the special ones. But mm-hmm. the ones you when you look back, it's uh, you know those guys that brought it every day, that played to their potential, that were great teammates, that were really the glue to some of those great teams. It's not always the the star player that's the uh, uh, the one you remember quite as much as that one that uh, that you knew you could count on all the time. Definitely. Um, so you're obviously a great inspiration for a lot of people. But we were wondering who who's your inspiration? Who's your person that you look up to? Who inspires you? Well, our high school coach Jerry Bisher, you know, uh, you know, he uh, he was a hard guy. He was a hard guy to play for. And when you were playing for him, you didn't particularly like him. But I look back, and he instilled a lot of discipline early in my life. And I've just been really blessed to play for good coaches all the way around. Some of them are still around here. You know, I, I played for uh, uh, Marshall Schaefer Cutter. People remember played on the '66 state championship team that's out on the banner here. Went on to a great career at Sullivan High School, but his first job was eighth grade coach at uh, Gerald Elementary School, and that was my eighth grade year. So when he when he came in right out of college and had played on the '66 team, you know, we thought he was, you know, uh, as big a celebrity as there was, you know, and really was motivating and, and inspired us to dream about being a varsity Dutchman someday. You know, I remember that about him. And then John Hayner, who still lives in town, John was my freshman coach, and. He, and as far as I'm concerned, he's one of the, the best coaches I ever played for or, or, uh, or been around in the time of coaching. He just was an outstanding coach and had so much to do with that state championship team because he molded us at that early early level. And uh, and then, of course, Jerry Bisher, who's a Missouri Sports Hall of Fame coach that, uh, you know, just, again, he was a hard guy to play for. But uh, but when you look back, you're glad you played for him. So, uh, so yeah, those guys, uh, all that – we're from the community, or, or uh, uh, some of them still living here, were, were really impactful to me. Well, you've had a lot of coaches impact you, but you also have a coach of impact a lot of people. And um, we see you now. You know, you're still really involved in the community. You have given lessons to me and my teammates and some other mm-hmm. players. And I mean, you come to a lot of the games and support. I saw you at the boys district game last night, cheering them on. So, why is it so important to you to stay um, active in the lives of your past athletes and? Well, you know, I, I just, one of the things I always, my wife and I talked about this this morning, but uh, when I had a team of my own that I was coaching, I'd always tell them, you know, you're not just representing yourself or your school right now, but you're really representing everybody that ever played here and wore that uniform. And, uh, you know, I feel that way about Owensville now when I go watch. It's like, hey, you know, don't don't let me down. You know, winning and losing is not the thing, but play hard, play unselfish, play the right way. And uh, you guys and your team this year, you know, just couldn't be more proud of you, and then, you know, I, I just really take my hat off to the to the boys team to to go through so much adversity and lose close games, and, but they just kept getting better all year, and now they're having a lot of fun, you know. And I went and watched them just uh, put a beat down on St. James mm-hmm. last night, you know, and just really looked good doing it. And uh, you know, it's not just winning the games, but that they stayed. A lot of times, teams will come apart whenever that happens, and uh, so you know, I'm very proud of. Uh, of how the teams are playing right now, but I just, uh, you know, when you play somewhere, I think you want to be able to go back and not say, I hope this team isn't better than the team I played on. You say, hey, I want, I want your, I'm part of this now. I want you to have success because I, I was part of that team at one point. That's an awesome outlook. Coach, you shared a lot of wisdom with us today, and um, a lot of young athletes in the community might see this, and you've obviously given them a lot of great words. But if you could give a message to the younger athletes in the community who are developing in the program, what would you say to them? You know, I just heard something recently from Duke's women's coach, and I think it really uh, included a lot of things, helped me put uh, into words maybe what, what I thought all along. But she said, you know, don't look for easy. You know, that's not where you grow. Things are going to be hard, you know, whenever you – get to where you're at those points where adversity hits or things get hard, get good at handling hard, she said. And then when that gets, when you get good at handling hard, it's going to get harder. But that's where the growth happens, you know. In your comfort zone, you don't get better. You're not going to make the improvements you need to make. So look for ways to challenge yourself. Look for ways to, uh, to make things hard. Get out of your comfort zone. And then when it starts getting comfortable, that's, that's a, a caution light to you. Get it hard again. Play against better people push yourself harder in the, in your workouts. But, uh, you know, I always told our players, you know, everybody, a lot of people have dreams, okay, but winners have dreams and then they go for it. And that would be my advice is don't be one of those people that say, I want to be an all-state player and then play video games all summer, as you said, on your couch. It don't work that way. No. 
And finally, Coach, um, what advice would you have for OHS students graduating and going to the next chapter of their life after high school? Uh, some of the same things, really. Is uh, It's going to be hard. There's going to be things. But, you know, they, they always say, you know, have a dream and then go for it. And having a dream, it's like it's real. A lot of people have those dreams, like I've just said. Sometimes you get out of high school, you don't know what your dream is exactly. You're still trying to figure that out. But, uh, but once you've decided what it is, you know, and go for it. When you go to, if you go away to college, whatever you do, I think we're in a time in our society right now is question things. You know, don't go in. You know, I, I just spent two years helping one of my former players at a university in St. Louis, and uh, it seems like everybody just, hey, tell me what to do and I'll do it. You know, don't just, when you, if you go to college and somebody's got doctor in front of their name, that doesn't mean they have all the answers, you know. Question things, be your own critical thinker, and, uh, and learn that way and don't be afraid to uh, question things. You know, I, I like the analogy I heard again with the coach not too long ago. So if you go to the airport and there's a escalator and stairs, you see everybody's on the escalator. And there's a couple reasons. One of them is it's easier. And again, I've just said, don't look for easy. Okay, but the other one is that's what everybody else is doing. Don't take that route either. Be your own person. And, uh, and uh, when you decide what you want to do, go for it. Thank you so much, Coach, for your words and for coming in today. All we right. really appreciate it. Okay, and good luck Thursday. Thank you. <laughs>